We at Women in Jazz Media have been exploring the jazz environment, looking at ways we can support everyone in their work. We asked a wide range of people across the UK to start with, three questions. Firstly, what do you consider is a healthy jazz environment? Next, how is the jazz environment in your work? And finally, what can we do to change it? We were thrilled with the response and very grateful that some people were happy to film their answers. Hello, I'm Sarah Moore and I'm uh, answering three questions from women in jazz media. The first one is, what do you consider a healthy jazz environment? Um, I think that's a situation where people come together to make music and the music is the most important thing and their ego is the least important thing. Um, I worked for many years with the bass player Mick Hutton and he once described jazz as say a quartet, four people playing separately together and that seems to sum it up completely. There's room for creativity but you're always listening to what other people are doing and interacting with them and the music moves on collectively and I think that is a, a healthy jazz environment. Also a jazz environment I've really enjoyed and I think it was really healthy was at the Vortex and I hope it comes back. Um, the jazz improv nights run by Orphie Robinson, um, Cleveland and Tori and that is when you get on stage with people you don't know and you don't know what's going to happen but um, if everybody is, is generous um, and listening fantastic things can happen and they are really spontaneous. Um, I think that is a, a healthy jazz environment. The second question is how is the jazz environment for you in your work? Um, fine. I've never felt that being me or being a woman or being a certain ethnicity had any bearing on what I was doing. I'm a singer so it's pretty normal to be a woman. You know, often, you know, in the past, in fact, many, many more singers that were female than male. Um, and I've sung in all sorts of different situations, including, you know, being the singer with a big band. And um, I think I've just been lucky because the calibre of the musicians has meant that me being a woman didn't really come into it, although I certainly didn't feel it did. Um, it's whether you're um, contributing to the music in a creative way. That's, that's what's always counted. And so the third question is, what can we do to change it? if it's bad, I think is obviously education and to get as many people from different backgrounds in every sense into music, um, socio-economic, you know, ethnicity, <laughs> gender and whatever. The more diverse jazz is, the better it will be. I, I hope that's happening. Uh, at least amongst gigging musicians. I think it's more difficult now with the massive cuts to further education and general uh, learning of music in schools. I think that's really, really undervalued. And I think bringing back music into schools as, as a core part of the curriculum is fantastic in, or would be fantastic <laughs> if they did it. Um, I'm sure teachers want to, but their hands are tied because they have lots of other things to cram in to children's days. Um, but I think that would be a great thing to keep going and in fact increase. I hope those answers are okay and make sense. Bye. So what is a healthy jazz environment? I think that's a great question. So for me, a, jazz, a, a healthy jazz environment is one where people can be creative, um, without feeling inhibited. I think a healthy jazz environment is one where people feel they can develop and they can grow their ideas uh, without um, nasty criticism, um, to feel warmth in the room for what they're doing um, and to feel warmth in the room for the fact that they may be progressive in a way that is as yet not understood. Um, 
that for me is a healthy jazz environment because jazz is a creative art form. It's about something that people um, take in terms of their own ideas and nurture and develop them. Um, and hopefully, ultimately want to share with other people and that people can share in uh, their creativity with them. So I think it's really, really important that um, all the, the environment is set um, for that creativity to take place. And as a result, it just absolutely needs to be what I think is a healthy jazz environment. Um, how is it for me in the work that I do? Well, I guess I'm not necessarily seeing um, enough opportunity. I'm not seeing enough creativity um, in terms of how people are able to express themselves in terms of the platforms that are available. Um, I think all of those things in their own way create uh, a non-healthy environment because um, they suggest this use of uh, well-being um, that we all know can affect people so much. So I think that's a really important consideration. And I just love to see a really fair and level playing field for emerging talent and also those who are already uh, involved and established so that everyone can be heard and encouraged to thrive. I guess what needs to change is attitude and approach. We all need to think about an inclusive environment. We all need to think about um, a diverse environment um, in terms of those who participate, whether those are the musicians, whether those are the promoters, whether those are the technical staff. It's all about thinking about a diverse and inclusive community. And I think if we're able to, to look at that and address that, I think that will pay uh, really good dividends um, with a view to having a healthy environment for all jazz musicians and all uh, all those who are involved in our community to thrive and really have ownership and in, and enjoy being a part of that community. Hello, it's Luca Manning here. And um, what I'd consider a healthy jazz environment is one that's free of judgment, um, one that's safe, one that's exciting. Um, and I'd really like to see jazz um kind of return to its roots of being a kind of a hotbed of, of self-expression you know it, it, we know it's a music that was born out of struggle black american music and and um, but it was also music that was something that that, that sparked joy and had a real sense of community and there's a real kind of um innate form of music making in terms of the improvisational element of jazz so i for me jazz is about community and um, I would really like to see the spaces in which jazz is, is you know, present um, be spaces that are inclusive of, of everyone, no matter what their formal music training or, or musical background, cultural background, um, as well as the, the, the obvious, you know, in terms of not um, being discriminative based on someone's gender identity or sexual orientation or class or uh, ability level or race. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think in order to make great music, then I think you need to trust the people that you're making it with and be and, uh, be allowed to be vulnerable. So I think that um, a, a safe space for jazz would be somewhere that's that's trusting, where we can take risks, um, have exciting atmospheres, have fun. Um, all in the safety, knowing that we're not going to be we're not going to be judged, um, and we can be authentically ourselves in these spaces. So I have a theory that there have always been brilliant female jazz musicians. They just haven't always been able to get the childcare. Pre-children, when you're offered a gig, your two main considerations are: Am I free? Do I want to do this? But once you have kids, it kicks off this logistical childcare. Let's not call it a nightmare. Let's say. Um, it's a challenge. Now I understand that um, childcare for all working parents can be a pain but nursery, school and wraparound care are designed to help if you work nine to five and if your jazz gig starts at 9.30 at night then no help whatsoever. 
If you've got a supportive partner whose working pattern complements yours, or if you have family who can help, then that's great. But otherwise, you have to start the dreaded babysitter quest and um, th then paying them also eats into a big chunk of your gig money. I know it's my choice to do gigs at unsociable hours, but my point is this. It's just another obstacle for female jazz musicians as statistically women are still more likely to be the primary carers of their children on top of the issues of sexism in the jazz profession. So why accept gigs if they're so much hassle? Because art is important and I want my children to know that I am still passionate about something. Performing makes me happy, which in turn makes me a better mum. I love my children dearly and I will still put them first but playing music is a big part of who I am and although they may roll their eyes about me going on about jazz again, I think they are secretly quite proud. I'm not sure what the answer is, unless we can set up a network of uh, jazz mum babysitters and we can book each other a bit like an Airbnb. But band leaders, please don't be put off from booking or don't overlook a female jazz musician just because she has children and may need a little bit more flexibility with um, rehearsal times and gig arrival and departures. Anyway, I feel better now for having had a rant and uh, hooray for Sunday afternoon jazz gigs. Hi everyone, it's Graham Jay here. I'm calling from a lovely sunny Dublin. Um, I hope you're all surviving the lockdown and I'm very happy that Women in Jazz Media asked me to participate in this project. So the first question, what do I consider is a healthy jazz environment? Well, in my opinion, it's it's about the art. It's about allowing artists to just be themselves, to express themselves. Um, I think it's about the community supporting one another and just kind of letting people do their own thing. Um, I think to, you know, that that's the support that we need going forward is just let people express themselves without any judgment. Um, that to me would be a healthy jazz environment. Um, so the second question, how is the jazz environment in my work? Well, to be honest, I think I'm fairly lucky. I've never experienced any um, outward homophobia except for the one time when I got that awful review because, and where the guy attacked my sexuality and not my art. Most of the time it's fine. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, my colleagues and everything are very, un, very supportive and they just let me do my own thing, which is again important to me. Um, I, I would say the, the thing that in, annoys me is that, as I said, that sounds terrible and sure, look, it is what it is. I do think that bookers have far too much say and I do think sometimes they worry about whether an artist's sexuality might stop audiences coming into a venue. I do think that's a big problem um, because, you know, there's still an awful lot of that kind of deep rooted masculinity in jazz. Um, so I do think that sometimes stops stops artists coming, coming out a bit more. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think we we need to kind of move past that for us all and include of course with women as well that you know we need to allow people to just be who they have to be and you know stop trying to put limitations on people that shouldn't be there you know um and what can we do to change it as I said just having having more of an open mind about things and allowing people to be the artists that they need to be I mean I don't care if someone's sexuality is 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 in my face. Like it's none of my business who people go to bed with, or uh, I don't go because a, there's a, a female vocalist or a male vocalist. I go because I like the artist, um, and I want to hear what they have to say, and I want to hear how they perform. So it's really I think we need to move past all the labels. Um, and just stop labelling people and expecting them to be what's already come before because then, you know, there's no progression, there's no growth. So that's kind of my, my two cents worth and I hope um, that, that it kind of makes some sense. So thank you very much. Thank you. For me, a healthy jazz environment is one in which you can be your wholehearted self, where you can 
try new things and be bold and be brave um, and not be confined to any sort of laws or rules or you can literally just be free um, to explore. For me, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by incredible women who help me alongside opportunities and give me a confidence boost and give me the platform to be able to do what I do and say what I say. However, for people like me, black women in jazz media and women in jazz media, there isn't that representation of women that look like them doing what they do or that are even given the opportunities to try and do what they do. Um, so I think that's one really, really big thing that needs to change in jazz. Also just anything that puts people in some sort of box or pigeonhole or tells them they can't do this or they can't do that. It doesn't matter where you come from or what instrument you play or what you look like or what gender you are, you should be able to do whatever comes naturally to you. Um, so I think that's something really big that could change in the industry. Hello, Luca Manning here. And um, the jazz environment for me and my work, um, I, I can only speak from my own personal experience. And obviously it's a scene that I'm really happy to to be a part of and contribute to and learn from and exist in. Um, but I'm also not conscious of remaining solely in the jazz scene. Um, I'm a creative human being that just loves to create and I don't really consider where in which scene I do that I don't aim to place myself in any one place um, and it definitely took me a while to find my people and, and now I'm in a position where I know um, who's who understands me um, and what kind of things I want to be doing but certainly when I first arrived on the jazz scene I was determined to to cut my teeth becoming what it means to be a great jazz vocalist and I think I compromised parts of myself in order to do that because I felt I had to in order to be successful in the scene and that sometimes doesn't manifest in a way that's um you know direct or explicit it's maybe not anyone breathing down your neck telling you to change but there's a kind of unspoken atmosphere that if you want to you know you, you need to be palatable to certain people if you want to succeed so there's definitely a hyper masculinized aspect of the jazz scene that I find difficult to relate to there's um the whole culture of, of big bands and and that that can be super macho and, and misogynistic and um there's also just a, a real kind of snobbery to the music I think um between players and jam sessions of a kind of terrible atmosphere um often However, we are seeing that change now. There's a, there's much greater diversity within the scene and people doing their own things. And I think the more we throw away what it means to exist in the jazz scene, then the more liberated we might feel. Because what I've found is there's creative people everywhere that want to make great stuff that, you know, and that's the most important thing. Um, But yeah, I think now I'm at a place where I'm very comfortable working with the people I work with and meeting new people that aren't solely existing in the jazz circuit and and finding my place to to do what I do um as well as speaking up for my community and calling out any bullshit um so yeah I, I think I think I definitely recognized I felt othered coming into the scene and then did what I needed to do to 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 get by and now I've kind of decided to be nothing but myself Charlotte Keefe here and I'm really pleased to be part of this special video, this special important video about women in jazz. Um, so the first question, uh, for me, a healthy jazz environment does mean diversity. Um, I really want to see and hear folks from different races, ethnicities, backgrounds, people um, of different genders, sexualities, ages um, and physical abilities that's healthy. And the music that is therefore created, shared and promoted as part of, say, a festival lineup, um, a, a playlist, a radio show, for instance, um, I truly believe that that music will have more of a powerful attraction and connection to a bigger audience, which, of course, is really important in terms of, of keeping the music moving. <laughs> what is it like a jazz environment for me and my work um it used to be 
pretty dodgy, I think. Look, looking back on it, I definitely share stories with, I know, lots of other women in jazz in terms of, you know, um, men assuming that I'm the singer in the band, um, being very touchy-feely when, you know, that's just absolute no thank you. I'm I'm also a lesbian, so it's just not going to, you know, nothing is, is going to work in that sense. Um I think, you know, and, and the patronising thing, you know, being told halfway through a gig um, by a guy that's, you know, played with Prince and and Jamie Cullum and Amy Winehouse and being sort of young and, and, and nervous about doing the gig. And then halfway through, he, he turns, takes his saxophone mouthpiece out of his mouth and goes, oh, you're pretty good, aren't you, for a woman? And you just think, like, you know, what, why? What, what, why, you know? Um, I think what's you know that's very much the the past it's not at all what happens to me now and i think that's that has you know for me i i know i don't need to put myself in those situations again you know i don't i don't i'm much more confident as a human as a woman as a musician now so i'm not if at all putting myself in those positions um again and i you know i wonder what it's like for young musicians coming through today um, whether they have, you know, are getting the similar stories or whether things are different. You know, there's so many things happening online, of course. Um, so the third question about what um, women in jazz media can be doing um, to change um, the current jazz environment is quite, you know, quite simply just keep keep doing what, what, what you are already doing, sharing and posting about so many different women and um, the different music that they are making, that they're releasing, that they're producing, the different types of jazz from the different areas of this incredible world that we live in, um, uh, people that write about the music, people that take pictures of this music and the music makers, people that, that, that record, Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let's, you know, keep spreading the word about all of the women that are there. I think so many things are visual and it's so important just to see that and what women in jazz media are doing, posting, 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 posting these beautiful pictures of women in action, women making music is what the world needs to see. And in seeing it, it will, you know, spread diversity, love and music. So yeah. And also connecting with men as well, connecting with men. A lot of men actually do want diversity and are very conscious of having that 50-50 split within the music that they are promoting or um, sharing, creating, putting out. So there we are. Thanks very much. My name is Derek Daly and I'm a bassist. What do I consider a healthy jazz environment? Um, a healthy jazz environment for me is one way you can express yourself, you've got complete freedom of ideas. It's a place where you can have uh, a less than brilliant musical idea and not immediately be shut down and you will be supported. I mean, my experience of jazz is we will start together and we will end together and stuff will happen in the middle, but so long as we can support each other, then it's, it's, a, it's a good song, it's a good time. It's, a, it's to me what jazz is about. It's about finding people you connect with on any level musically and doing something together. Like completing a task is to me is very important, like making the song sound good. The jazz environment for me in my work has been largely really good actually. Um, when I was younger I did have troubles of the troubles with expressing my ideas or I just didn't think they were good. But in my experience, jazz music is one of the places where there are no stupid ideas. They're just ideas people don't want to use yet or something that hasn't been implemented properly. Like You will, at some point, get to use that. It might not be the song, might not be this gig, but you'll get to use the idea. And if it sounds good, it sounds good, and use it. I've personally never really been shut down by any other jazz musicians. I mean, I've been told to come back and try it slightly differently, but. The jazz environment for me in my work has been largely really good, actually. Um, when I was younger, I did have troubles of the troubles with expressing my ideas, or I just didn't think they were good. But in my experience, jazz music is one of the places where 
there are no stupid ideas. They're just ideas people don't want to use yet or something that hasn't been implemented properly. Like you will at some point get to use that. It might not be the song, might not be this gig, but you will get to use the idea. And if it sounds good, it sounds good and use it. I've personally never really been shut down by any other jazz musicians. I mean, I've been told to come back and try it slightly differently, but. Hi, this is Luca Manning. And in terms of what we can do to change the jazz scene, I mean, it's a kind of million dollar question, isn't it? And I certainly don't have the answer. But if I was to talk about anything in relation to this question, I'd want to talk about empathy and the importance of intersectionality. I think to put yourself into someone else's shoes, we all have our own narrative, our own baggage, our own story that brought us to this wonderful music. And we're so privileged to be able to do what we love and to have something that we love so deeply. So I think to just consider that every time you step onto the stage with someone or you go into a rehearsal room or you're in a classroom, if you're teaching, to just understand that everyone's got their different journey that's brought them to that place there and then. So if you can be more considerate of that and more empathetic towards that, then I think we can exist um, in, in harmony and and we'll find that hopefully that people will just be more considerate of each other and, and less prejudice. Um, I think speaking up and calling stuff out is really important and, and having conversations like this. But yeah, the main thing for me is if you're part of the demographic that's the majority playing jazz right now, i.e. The, perhaps part of the problem um, and creating these atmospheres, then if you just stop and think about how it might feel to to be the only X in the room, um, and that hopefully will inform your your behaviour going forward. Hi, I'm Wendy Kirkland, pianist, composer, and singer, and I'm here as part of the Women in Jazz Media team. Firstly, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been involved with this project so far. There is a lot of work to be done, and we thought it was important to get a wide range of people's thoughts and views to help inform us of the work that we can do. We really appreciate everyone who has been involved in this video and all the people we have spoken to in other ways, for instance, uh, through our survey. For me, my working environment has been um, mostly positive and supportive with odd moments of not being quite so positive and supportive. Um, overall, uh, good, but there would, there would have been uh, some room for improvement, definitely. It's been so invaluable and interesting to hear people's thoughts. I think we can all agree that there are some important messages here and work that we can all do, whether you're a musician, a reviewer, a venue, basically anyone in the industry. And there is one very simple thing we can do right now, that is ensure everyone feels welcomed and valued. For us at Women in Jazz Media, we are trying to ensure everyone feels welcomed in their work free to be themselves and that there are no barriers. We obviously can't do this alone, so hope you will support us in our work. Thank you for watching and again, a huge thank you to everyone involved in making this video.